with Bob Sala of DMA, and we're going to talk about cloud-based systems and what kind of a difference they can make in a supply chain environment. So, Bob, tell me a little bit about the company, and then we can talk about um, your experiences. Sure. Uh, DMA is a um, national food service distributor. We're uh, a cooperative really owned by the industry's largest food service distribution companies. We exist to service chain operators on a national basis who need food service products in their restaurants to fulfill uh, those contracts. Okay. And I know you've been working with cloud-based systems, and that's an, something that uh, a lot of, the, of our readers are either thinking about or maybe skeptical of. So just tell me a little bit about your experience with uh, SaaS and what kind of uh, advantages you've been able to, to glean from it. Sure. For us, uh, SaaS has been really important on two levels. Uh, first of all, there's the obvious um, uh, lack of uh, the requirement for huge capital and all mm -hmm. of the um, infrastructure management that goes along with uh, uh, managing an environment. For us, we have a BI environment that's a SaaS environment that allowed us to get up to speed quickly, and, and it's certainly scalable and low cost. But the real benefit for us has been the ability to solve supply chain problems. Our industry is characterized by a lack of visibility throughout the supply chain in terms of how products move. So we're able to solve problems for our chain operator customers on things like how products move uh, on a limited time offer, for example, um, how to have real-time data on product movement to make sure that not too much product is produced or too little is produced to fulfill the, the demand that's needed to do that promotion. Right, and, and you're in a, in a nearly real-time business with restaurants. We are indeed. Right. So how, how does that visibility come through with um, the, the kind of things that have to happen in terms of order, order delivery, receipt, um, transportation? Right. For us, it's, um, there are a couple of key drivers that drive uh, cost in our business. Uh, mm -hmm. Deliveries would be one. Uh, for us, if uh, we pro forma or profile out a program that is to have two deliveries per week, if it turns out to be three, that's a pretty big problem for us. So mm -hmm. having uh, real-time data that shows not only that those extra deliveries are occurring, but provides some visibility as to why we can sit down with our customer and try to uh, work through those issues. Uh, consequently, also, if there are fewer deliveries that can be taken to fulfill the need of the contract, mm -hmm. there is some sharing that we'll provide in that as well in terms of mm -hmm. uh, sharing of cost and whatnot to take cost out of the supply chain. Okay. Uh, and so having this data um, provided in this kind of an environment where our customers and our account managers can have access to it together is a real big win for us. Okay. And I, you told me that you, you didn't really start out from a premises-based system, or at least right. the majority of it. How, did, how yeah. did you start this whole thing? It's interesting. Uh, 22 years ago, this was just a group of 12 large wholesalers with uh, uh, their own dedicated, mostly homegrown ERP environments. Mm. Uh, so while we were able to get away with basic distribution uh, services, when customers started asking us for spend analysis or data, uh, to with which to you know to manage their programs, we couldn't provide anything. So we tried to um, uh, use these um, basically mainframe systems to try to uh, pull data together. But a lot of it was manual, you know, manual processes, a lot right. of uh, uh, band aids and bailing wire <laughs> right, right. in terms of systems to put this together. And for us, when the um, really when web based technology came around around 2000 or so we were actually kind of early adopters on hmm. certain because we didn't have a choice i mean we were never going to be able to write a, a mainframe type system with the margins in our business to hmm. pull together these 12 companies to be able to do it that way hmm. so for us the internet and then more recently um, uh, bi technology through sas has been a, a huge win for us right. so being able to to bring the the distributed data together was was really a key to this, and then doing aggregated, consolidated, whatever word you want to put on sure. it. Sure. Uh, uh, exactly. Uh, the, the the big thing for us is that what else, another characteristic of our industry is that um, the uh, universal product coding is not necessarily prevalent in food service like it is in retail right. food. Right. So we had to set up a separate um, uh, web-based uh, tool that was a product mapping tool to literally create our own UPC system. Hmm. When we did that, we then created a, a database that we could bolt on top uh, a business analytics tool. We happened to choose Pivot Link, which we think was best, best of breed for us at that time. And it turned out to be a low cost way to provide this kind of data uh, with all this quote unquote mapped data, which right. was really important to have uh, for our customers as well. Okay. 
And do you are, are you using any EDI tools for this? I mean, using the standard purchase order kinds of things? or We really don't. Okay. Um, there are some, we started some years ago to use some um, basic EDI transactions, uh, invoice, particularly on the invoicing and uh, payment side of the equation. Right. Uh, we use some transaction sets there. But uh, this, uh, the, the environment that we're in now uh, has uh, not really required us to do that at all. And, and we were not heavily heavy users in the EDI environment right. at that time anyway. So this, uh, for us, was something where we came from almost nothing to a SaaS-type <laughs> right, right. environment, which so is a little really unusual. So you really have more of a closed ecosystem. We do. We do indeed. Right. And uh, I must say that um, because our competitors, we have a couple of fairly large national competitors, mm -hmm who um, are working in legacy environments, many of them uh, EDI-based, uh, we're able to do what we do in a much more nimble, cost-effective mm -hmm. way than our largest competitor. It's one of the things that we, one of the reasons why we survived <laughs> <laughs> for 22 years. Great, great. Anything else you want to add? Oh, I would just say that, uh, uh, that uh, for us, um, SaaS technology has been huge in that we've kind of gotten ourselves into a community of people and providers, a conference like uh, the one uh, that we're in right now has been a, a pretty big deal for us because uh, now we have a tendency to, whenever we look at putting up some kind of IT uh, application or something, we always ask the question, uh, can we do this in, a, in, a, in, a, in the cloud? Sure. And, uh, and we don't always, but we do it often enough that uh, I think that uh, once you get into this sort of thing and get used to all of the pros and cons associated with SaaS, and there are some, uh, for us, uh, the pros way uh, uh, overcome the, uh, the cons, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, it's been great for us. Great, great. Well, good. Well, thanks so much for, for joining me. I appreciate it. My pleasure, Scott. Thank you.